Hi everyone, I'm Sandra Ingerman and welcome to the Shaman's Cave. And I'm Renee Barbo and we are excited to be here one more time with all of you. And I want to say thank you for listening. So many times recently, I, I, people have written to us and on Facebook and other places and told us about how a show has impacted us. Now I can see that there's, you know, th three or 4,000 people listening a week. But when I get those special messages, I'm there like, oh yeah, they are listening. Yes, they're not only, you know, they're not just clicking on, but they're listening. And so really, and if you are listening and you do like what we do, what the, what would be in really great irony and, and reciprocity would be to hit share and, and bring a couple more friends over here because I really believe we're serving a very important function uh, right now, holding space as elders, as community leaders and shamanic teachers for you to explore your own wisdom deeper. Yeah, absolutely. Um... We're, we're getting incredible feedback on the show. Uh, I, I don't read the comments on YouTube. Uh, Renee does that, but I like to, I get the Shaman's Cave emails. And so a lot of you have been um, sending long emails expressing how you're feeling um, just about um, people talking about things that are relevant and not just talking, but sharing tools and mm -hmm. other want right now so we are we are trying to give you some tools and there's a topic that we'd love to talk to you today to give you some tools because this is affecting uh, a lot of the spiritual uh, community right now um, I've recently uh, been writing a lot after seeing so many pictures of rivers that uh, are um, we're dependent on for our food sources completely drying up. Um, you can walk across rivers that usually boats used to go through, but yet on other parts of the planet, there's unbelievable amounts of flooding going on. And so I've been talking a lot about uh, working with transfiguration um, um, because the work of transfiguration from the medicine for the earth work that I teach, um, it, it really is about uh, reversing environmental pollution and climate change. It really does give us tools. They're simple tools, but they've been working for hundreds of thousands of years. And, um, and so one of our listeners uh, wrote to us about all the trees that are dying from the drought um, that's hit the Southwest. And, um, and I know my sister-in-law was here the other day and she was talking about where she lives. Where she lives in a beautiful town in the mountains. There are no birds because they all died from the avian flu. So we're really being hit by environmental and climatic events that are um, uh, killing a lot of our nature being. And we feel, um, people are just feeling like, what can I do helpless um, in watching the beauty of this planet just be destroyed right now? Some of it, of course, is is natural. Some of it is the earth is changing. And uh, how the earth works is in cycles and in phases. And as soon as something dies, um, new life is reborn. New beings are reborn. New species are reborn. So the earth is in a constant process of death and, and rebirth. So we can't blame it all on humans, but we can blame a lot on, on <laughs> humans. Um, our greed and our need for power over and not caring about um, the earth is uh, also killing our trees, killing our birds, killing, um, killing people, killing uh, everything on the planet. So. As spiritual practitioners, uh, what we want to talk about in this show is what are some practices that we can do when we start seeing trees dying and a beloved nature beings dying? How do we honor them? What do we do? How do we try to help them at this time? 
Hmm. Well, there's just so much to unpack here. And when you said tools before, I was just wanted to throw in something. Speaking of tools, <laughs> um, Sandra and I are going to be teaching a, a day, day long retreat in November 12th. And the way you're going to find out about it is if you get on our mailing list over at shamanstv.com and sign up to get for there. But on to the trees. So I've mentioned that I was building a house and this last phase of the building required rearranging the whole property to put the septic in and the water lines. And I go through life sometimes like really, you know, willy nilly and it looks like I'm just the practical one. Well, when they started taking out the trees and moving things around on my property, I became so disassembled. I, I, I wasn't sleeping. I was really all out of sorts. And it really brought home to me this important subject that we're talking about is, you know, how really the earth is one and how connected we are and what really made it okay somehow for me or, or brought me back into balance was that when we had dug a hole for the water line buried there was the remnants of a rotting tree. And this tree had been rotting for a very long time. So it wasn't like just yesterday news tree. It was probably 40 or 50 years old and that there were still the remnants of that. So that not only this is a, a layered topic, it isn't just about what's going on there, but like what's in the earth and how this evolutionary process has been going on long before. Well, certainly long before the shamans cave, but but it's been going on since the you know the earth started to spin and finding some way of harmonizing and balancing with the very natural acts of nature that humanity through our anthropocene is speeding up is really the work of us way showers and shamanic practitioners and people who have been nature tenders for a long long time absolutely and people are always writing what what can i do mm -hmm. what can i do and so uh, many years ago um when santa fe first started entering it's really bad uh, drought that just really continued and we did lose eight million trees um my husband and i we did no sprays um at all um of course there was fighting division like there always is do you spray do you not spray you know do you take vaccines do you not you know <laughs> it's the same fight going on in in our neighborhoods who was spraying poison and who <laughs> who was not um Anyway, uh, we transfigured uh, every day and we've done a lot of tr shows on transfiguration, but very quickly it's where you understand that you're more than your body or your mind, but that you're actually the, the golden light of the stars, the moon, the sun, and it's where you imagine uh, the golden light of the stars, the moon, the sun, uh, being absorbed by all your cells and then emanating it out um, into the world. And if you look on SandraIngerman.com under results, uh, GDV results, um, you'll see scientific experiments that we actually conducted showing how we were able to bring water, other substances, and people back to their natural states that were, were uh, dealing with toxins and dealing with uh, illness. And so we know that the work works, um, not in all cases, because there is lessons that come with illness. So there is a reason when things can't be fixed. Um, so I worked with my husband with the process of transfiguration. We saw the trees not suffering. We didn't see the trees in need of water. We just saw them in their divine perfection, um, shining. And we, I, I asked them cause I wasn't feeling well at the time if they would see me in my divine perfection. Mm. And I just walked around the property every day doing that. And if I couldn't do it, I 
reflected it in my journeys. I walked around and blessed every tree. Um, my little next door neighbor was eight years old. She hugged, she, she grew up, was born on that, her land and she every day hugged every single tree. She knew every tree's name. Um, and the community kind of came together and shared, um, uh, there was a old German witch out in a little <laughs> village that gave us uh, something to try. So the spiritual community came together and we shared spiritual tools with each other. And Woods and I lost eight trees, which uh, if you knew how many trees we had, that was an amazing miracle. So we, there is something we could do with spiritual work as long as we're not going against the rules of nature, I think is really important. But what I teach people like Renee, and I get so many, uh, so much communication from loggers who feel terrible about cutting down trees in the past, is um, I tell them to uh, go back to where uh, they cut down the trees. Uh, as they approach the land, anytime you approach nature, I say, may you step in, may I step into your energy because we just force ourselves on nature. We never ask, or it's like, it's like somebody just walking into your house unannounced. May I, may I come into your home? <laughs> um, so you, you ask the tree the same thing. And then when you're with trees that have died or plants that have died, what I tell people to do is to thank um, the nature being that died for all the beauty, everything that it shared and its unique gift that it brought to the web of life and that it brought something so unique and something so precious. And we thank you so much for the life that you gave and contributed to the beauty of this planet and to the gifts of the web of life. And raise your arms up and wish the plant, the tree, the animal, a beautiful, graceful journey home. Mm. And um, I call it honorable closure. I do uh, memorial ceremonies with families like that. And um, I write about it in the book of ceremony that I wrote. And um, it's really a beautiful practice for those of you who are losing so much through uh, reconstruction going on in cities. People's trees are being cut down, whether they want them to or not. Um, all the climactic changes. If we could honor nature, honor nature will honor us in return, and some balance would return to the planet. <laughs> that was so 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 lovely, and and I, we're just so lucky on this planet that we have people like you, and, and who have been leading that leading that light for forty years, and. I, while you were talking, I was I was just reminiscing about how it how it was last week, so unnerved. And then I I've comforted myself in the process by thinking, oh yeah, but you planted three more trees, you know, you actually planted, and so that there was some kind of a reciprocity to the land that no, I didn't just strip you, but I started to re feed you and re nurture you and you know rebuild that balance because it is such a balance and especially for those of you who live a little bit outside the city like you know i have the family of deers who run through every day there's the mother with the two two babies one's a little bit bigger and and you know you see them down the street and they're like friends right. except for when they're chewing all, up your, all your plants but <laughs> but you know even you know one of my friends said oh you took down half the garden what are you going to do with all those plants out there i go well you know I'm going to let the deer have those. You know, I want to be in relationship that everybody's being disturbed here. And and so, you know, like we, we, we protect so much, but what are we giving back to the animals in the neighborhood that really need those 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 plants and those that nourishment? And they're they're entitled as well. So I think that it's about for me, it's about finding that balance of my relationship with nature because it's not something that is out there 
-hmm. So as those trees are stripped down and those waters are running, rivers are running dry, I'm running dry. Right. It, 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 we're all running dry. We're all parched. And so how are we going to quench our thirst? That's a very good question. <laughs> By doing our spiritual work, that's how we, uh, that's how I know to quench um, my thirst. So, um, but yeah, there's, uh, there's, there's a lot that we, um, it's not that we have to look at, there's a lot that we have to keep asking for spiritual help around because we can uh, give our power away to the newspapers that uh, just are trying to sell papers through fear, um, or we could give ourselves away to the spirits who actually have a different perspective on what's going on and can give us the tools on how to thrive and not just survive. So it's your choice to make. Um, mm -hmm. People who aren't reading the paper are not going through what a lot of people are going through right now. And that doesn't mean that you're not an empath and you're not feeling it anyway. Right. Sometimes I have to read the newspaper just to figure out what I'm feeling. Like, why am I so disjointed? Oh, okay. You know, just like a little bit of a reference point. But, you know, what, what I'd like to hear is, um, and I'm sure Sandra too, is tell us what you're doing to find balance in, in this, this natural cycle of nature breaking itself down and you know i i believe because i'm a spiritual being that i chose to be here during this dissolution of time and space but how do i take care of myself in the process so i would love to know how you're taking care of yourself in the process like i know sandra you're getting more rain this summer than you've had in a long time oh yeah we're getting we're getting great rain <laughs> and, and you know and, and and what you was talking about was time when there was no rain and so it's you know and there was disease so you know wherever you are in the cycle right now it's perfect and it's perfectly discombobulating and how how so this would be a great week to share your tools on how you're finding your way through this uh you know disassembly yeah and what are you doing to help nature um, mm -hmm. a lot of you post some really beautiful things of going out and finding a nature being who needs some help um what have you found some of you are finding uh, just being in a transfigured state with a bird that's hit a window or a bird that's dying, um, it will come back and fly away. Um, what, are, what are you doing um, out there that's helping nature right now? So um, we love nature and nature loves us. And as soon as we really get that we're, we're one community, um that's when we're going to start seeing things change <laughs> such a great reminder i always reiki the birds that sami brings and the rabbits that sami brings and i always reiki them put them in the locked garden until they feel better to fly away and they always are gone the next time i go out there so okay. you know that's just a it's a format of, of giving that that energy to the, the the living living forces well i think that's what we have for today and Again, if you want to find out about our upcoming workshop, definitely get on our email list at theshamanstv.com and then go over to our Facebook group because I'm sure we'll share it there as well. And then, you know, Sandra sends out a monthly um, transmutation newsletter and she does a ceremony for it. So you might want to get on her list as well. And you can do that from our website as well. Yeah, I, I have some good ceremonies coming up um, once a month. So uh, definitely tune in to those. So um, thank you, everybody. Thank you for the brilliant work that you're doing. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for supporting um, Renee and, and our show. Um, the way YouTube works is unless you get a certain number of subscribers, YouTube does not help you grow. Mm -hmm. um, YouTube will help you grow if you're willing to push that subscribe button. And that's all you have to do. You never hear from us again. That's all you have to do is push that button. So um, 
thank you for supporting us so that we can keep the show going. We really enjoy being with you and we really enjoy um, having a chance to speak with each other and hang out in each other's space. So <laughs> blessings, everyone. Have a beautiful day or night, wherever you are. Mm -hmm.